Jai Hari Nam Sakitan Ki Jai Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Bhagavate Vasudevaya Bhagavate Vasudevaya So today we're going to speak about the glories of Dhruva Maharaj. And so I want to, we could read a verse. I picked a verse from uh, this fourth canto, chapter 12, entitled Dhruva Maharaj Goes Back to Godhead, text number 45. Those of you who have your mobile phones, you can check. Canto 4, chapter 12, text 45. Danvan Yashayam Ayushyam Ayushyam Punyam Punyam Vasti Vasti Ayanam Ayanam Mahat Mahat Swadhyam Sadhyam Dravyam Dravyam Samanashyam Samanashyam Prashashyam Prashashyam Aga Aga Marshanam Marshanam Danyam Yashashyam Ayushyam Danyam Yashashyam Ayushyam Yam swasti ayanam mahat Yam swasti ayanam mahat Swadhyam drovyam samasyam Swadhyam drovyam samasyam Prashashyam agamashanam Prashashyam agamashanam Anybody want to chant? Danyam yasasyam ayushyam Danyam yasasyam ayushyam Punyam swasthyaya nammahat Punyam swasthyaya nammahat Svargyam dravyam saumanasyam Svargyam dravyam saumanasyam Prasasyam aghamarshanam Prasasyam aghamarshanam Alibriyam Dhanyam yashasya mayushyam Dhanyam yashasya mayushyam Punyam swasthyaya nammaha Punyam swasthyaya nammaha Svadhyam dravyam sau manasyam Svadhyam dravyam sau manasyam Prashasyam agamarshanam Prashasyam agamarshanam Danyam, bestowing wealth, yes ashyam, bestowing reputation, ayushyam, increasing the duration of life, punyam, sacred, swasti ayanam, creating auspiciousness, mahat, great, swargyam, bestowing achievement, of heavenly planets, heavenly planets. Dravyam, Dravyam of Druvaloka, Somanashyam, Somanashyam pleasing to the mind, pleasing to the mind. Prashashyam, Prashashyam glorious, glorious. Agamashanam, Agamashanam counteracting all kinds of sinful actions. Translation by hearing the narration of Dhruva Maharaj. One can fulfill desires for wealth, reputation, and increased duration of life. It is so auspicious that one can even go to a heavenly planet or attain Dhruva Loka, which was achieved by Dhruva Maharaj, just by hearing about him. The demigods also become pleased because this narration is so glorious and it is so powerful that it can counteract all the results of one's sinful actions. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. There are 
different types of men in this world, not all of them pure devotees. Some are karmis desiring to acquire vast wealth. There are also persons who are only after reputation. Some desire to be elevated to the heavenly planets or to go to Dhruva Loka, and others want to please the demigods to get material profits. Herein, it is recommended by Maitreya that every one of them can hear the narration about Dhruva Maharaj and thus get their desired goal. It is recommended that the devotees, Akama, the Karmis, Sarvakama, and the Jnanis who desire to be liberated, Moksha Kama, should all worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead to acquire their desired goals of life. Similarly, if anyone hears about the activities of the Lord's devotees, he can achieve the same result. There is no difference between the activities and character of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and those of his pure devotees. Vanchaka upatya rupyas cha kripa sindhu paeva cha patita nama manityo vaishna vityo namo nama jai shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda shri advaita gadadhar shri vasati gaur bhakta vinda hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took a lot of pleasure in hearing about Dhruva Maharaj. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he was residing in Jagannath Puri, he would regularly go to Totagopina, the temple there, and associate with Gadarhar Pandit. And he would request Gadarhar Pandit to read to him. He would either hear Prahlad Maharaj or Dhruva Maharaj. Mahaprabhu took great pleasure in hearing these two pastimes. So Dhruva Maharaj's pastime begins, of course you will all be familiar how, as a young child, he was the son of Uttanapad. And Uttanapad had two wives, Suniti Suruchi, two ladies, both his wives. And Dhruva Maharaj was the child of Suniti. And she was the older wife. So the husband has two wives. He's more inclined to the young wife than to the old wife. The young wife gives somehow more pleasure for the materialistic king. So Maharaj Uttanapada was in that situation and it happened that one day Dhruva Maharaj was trying to get onto the lap of his father Uttanapada. And at that time Suruchi who was the stepmother of Dhruva Maharaj, told him, get down from there, boy. You are not born from my womb. You are not qualified to sit there. And so this was a, a very uh, harsh rebuke. And Dhruva Maharaj, being the son of Bhutanapada, he had the Kshatriya spirit. Although he a young child, but that Kshatriya mood was in him. So Dhruva Maharaj was upset, tears in his eyes. He couldn't sit on his own father's lap, being chastised, told these harsh words by his stepmother. And he went running, crying to his mother and asked, what, what could, why it was like this? And the mother explained to him that I'm not the favorite wife of your father. What can I do? What can we do? There's nothing we can do about it. Because the, the, the Suniti, uh, Suruchi, she is the one who is more favored by your father. So Dhruva Maharaj, she has the mood of the Kshatriya and he's thinking, well, what can I do? about this. I want to get a kingdom greater than my father. And then she said that, well, you have to, you have to 
pray to God, find God. And so then he said, Drupa Maharaj asked his mother, where can I find him? And then mother said, well, many people go to the forest to find him. So then Dhruva Maharaj, although he's only a young boy, what's your age? Ten. Or oh, Dhruva Maharaj is only five. <laughs> anyway, he said, mother said, many people go to forest. So Dhruva said, all right, I will go to forest. And he was only a young child, but he went off into the forest and he was in the, going into forest. And who does he meet? Narada Muni. They met Narada Muni. Narada Muni came to him and said, Oh, where are you going? He said, I'm going to forest. I'm going to find God. I want to get a kingdom greater than my father. Narada Muni says to him and said, Oh, you're a very young boy. You better go home. When you're grown up, come back. Wait till you grow up. Then you come back. Dhruva Maharaj said, no, I'm not going home. I'm going to forest. I want to find God. So Narada Muni saw that this Dhruv is very Dhruv, he's very determined. He's really serious. So Narada Muni said, okay, okay. Because this is Satya Yuga, you have to understand. It was a, not in Kali Yuga. It was very uh, good qualities. So Narada Muni told them, you go in, into the forest there and there's this one lake there, Bindu Sarova, and you stay there on the bank of Bindu and you chant. And he gave a mantra to chant. You know, you know the mantra he gave Dhruva to chant? Right, yeah, that's the mantra. He gave that mantra to Dhruva Maharaj. He said, you chant this mantra, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So he was chanting. Dhruva Maharaj went there, he was chanting. And he was also doing austerities. And so in the beginning, he would only eat whatever was growing, whatever was falling from the trees. He would eat that dry leaves, whatever, like that. He would take some dry leaves. And then he stopped eating that. And then he would take only some water. And then he stopped doing also that. And then he would control even breathing. He was doing, somehow he was doing pranayama and controlling his breathing. And he was standing on one leg and at the same time chanting, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. And so he was doing so much austerities that what happened was that up in the higher planets, all the demigods were suffocating because Dhruva Maharaj was controlling his breathing and by his austerity, controlling the breath, all the demigods, they couldn't even get air. They were all suffocating. He had, he, he had, his austerities had this effect on the whole universe. And the demigods were all in anxiety. What are we going to do? And then they understood this is because of Dhruva Maharaj. And so it was at that time that the Lord appeared to Dhruva Maharaj. The Lord came riding on the back of Garuda and appeared before Dhruva Maharaj. So Dhruva Maharaj, you have to understand that he's, he went to the forest, he didn't go in the mood of pure devotion, right? In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord <coughs> Krishna describes four different reasons why people come to Krishna consciousness. Chatur Vida Bajanti Mam Gyana Sukritino Arjuna Arto Jignasur Artarti Gyani Cha Bharata Shabha. Lord Krishna says, Four kinds of people surrender to me for different reasons. One comes in distress, very common. Prabhupada said, 
most people came to him in distress. We were all in distress because we were not able to enjoy the material world as we wanted. And so we felt so much distress and we took shelter of Krishna. Other people come in search of wealth, like Dhruva Maharaj. Dhruva Maharaj wanted that kingdom. He wanted to get power greater than his father and even greater than his grandfather. And he had that desire to get the kingdom. It wasn't pure devotion. Other people come out of curiosity and some people come in search of knowledge. So four kinds of people. Chatur, Bajabajanti, Mangyana, Sukriti no Arjuna. They're all, they're all pious people. They've got some Sukriti and that's how they're able to come to Krishna consciousness. They take shelter of Krishna. Although they come with material desires, but they do have some Sukriti. So Dhruva Maharaj was like that. He'd gone to the forest and he did great austerities for six months. And so he was doing this standing on one leg and controlling his eating and then controlling his drinking and giving up eating, giving up drinking, even giving up breathing, controlling even his breath. And then finally the Lord appears to him. And the Lord appears to him. And what does Dhruva Maharaj say? Dhruva Maharaj says, Swamin Kritatosmi Varamnayachi. He said, Now I am fully satisfied. Now I don't want anything. The Lord was coming to fulfill his material desires, to give him a kingdom. But Dhruva Maharaj said, I said, I came here looking for pieces of broken glass, but I have found the most beautiful jewel. What does he mean? He was looking for broken glass, material wealth, material gains are just like broken glass. They're of no real value in, in spiritual life. They're simply a, a distraction to the path of spiritual progress. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Bhogaishvarya Pratattanam Thaya Parita Chaitasam Vaya Vasayatmika Buddhi Samadona Vidhiyate. In the minds of those who are attracted to material opulence and who are bewildered by such things, then the resolute determination for devotional service does not take place. So Dhruva Maharaj, although he had material desire in the beginning, when the Lord came, he had no more material desire. He gave it up. But the Lord said, no, just a minute now. <laughs> you brought me here. Now you have to take material. Your material desires will be fulfilled. So in this way, Dhruva Maharaj went home. He went back and Maharaj Uttanapada was actually lamenting because he understood he hadn't taken proper care of his son, that he had offended his son and he'd aroused that Kshatriya spirit in him. And Maharaj Uttanapada was very worried. He thought, oh, my son is only a young boy. He's only five years old. He's gone off to the forest. He'll be, be, he might have been eaten by wild animals there. Actually, sometimes we do the drama of Dhruva Maharaj going to the forest, you know. And what we do, we'll have a big lion come. Someone dresses up as a big lion, big head of a lion, and they'll come and they'll roar in, in the face of Dhruva Maharaj. And Dhruva Maharaj will look at the lion and say, Are you God? <laughs> Because Dhruva Maharaj has come to the forest, he's looking for God, he doesn't know quite what he's like. 
So when this big line comes, he asks him, are you? Are you the God? Is it you? In this way, Dhruva Maharaj, he had to have many tests before he was successful. It's not so easy to be successful in the path of Krishna consciousness. So anyway, Dhruva Maharaj, after seeing the Lord, and then he goes home, and Maharaj Uttanapada is so joyous that his son has come back after six months and he knows also he's heard from Narada Muni that your son Dhruva has achieved perfection. The Lord has come to him and bestowed all benedictions on him. So Uttanapada is so happy that he's got such a wonderful son that in six months he could go and see God, he could find God. So in this way, Uttanapada, he gave up the throne and when he went to Vanaprastha, went into the forest to do austerities. And he left the kingdom to Dhruva Maharaj. And Dhruva, Dhruva Maharaj became the ruler. But Dhruva Maharaj was a brother. Suruchi, she had a son, you see. Suniti had son, and Suruchi also had son. So the brother of Dhruva Maharaj, it happened that one time he had gone into Himalayas and somehow he was killed by a yaksha. The yakshas, some, uh, in, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Prabhupada says that sometimes the Tibetan people are known as yakshas have some kind of magic or mystic powers. So anyway, Dhruva Maharaj's brother was killed by one of the yakshas. So when Dhruva Maharaj got news that his brother had been killed by the yakshas, then Dhruva Maharaj made war on the yakshas. And he had a huge big battle. Dhruva Maharaj was fighting against the yakshas. And Dhruva Maharaj was killing the yakshas one after another, many of them. They were all coming with their mystic powers and magic tricks. And Dhruva Maharaj was having to fight them all, kill them. So it's very vividly described in Srimad Bhagavatam, the great battle which took between the yakshas and Dhruva Maharaj. And then finally, Swayam Bhuvamanu came to Dhruva Maharaj. So, Swayam Bhuvamanu is like grandfather of Dhruva Maharaj. Right? Uttanapada's father was Swayam Bhuvamanu. So, Swayam Bhuvamanu came there and he instructed Dhruva Maharaj <coughs> that actually this is not good. That your brother was killed by one person, but you are killing so many other people in revenge for your brother that this is not proper, this is not the way to please the Supreme Lord. And we should always think, we should always act for the pleasure of the Lord. We shouldn't be thinking just only about our own self and our own mood that we want to get revenge, that they killed my brother, I will kill all of them. This is not proper. So in this way, Swayam Bhuva Manu, he spoke to Dhruva Maharaj and told him, you know, you should control your mind and senses, control this anger and make peace with the yaksha. And in this way, Dhruva Maharaj, taking, he took good instruction from Swayam Bhuva Manu, and he went on and came back and ruled the kingdom. And then, after ruling the kingdom for some time, then Dhruva Maharaj retired to Badarik Ashram. Right? Everybody should retire at some point to prepare for the next life. Just like the Vedas say, Pancha Sorvam Vanambrajit. From age of 50, we should retire. We should enter into the 
vana prastha, go to the forest. In the Kali Yuga, of course, to go to the forest is difficult, but we can go to the Krishna consciousness movement. And Srila Prabhupada explains, for this purpose, we have centers in Mayapur and in Vrindavan, and like that, people who want to enter into Vanaprastha life, they can come and reside in the holy place and practice spiritual life. So this is how we prepare in the Kali Yuga, how we perform. Anyway, in the time of Dhruva Maharaj, Satya Yuga, he went to Badarik Ashram. He went up to Badarik Any of you been to Badarik Ashram? Yeah, some of you? Yeah. So it's like that Dhruva Maharaj went to Badarik He didn't just go in the car, <laughs> right? He didn't, you know, how did he go? He walked there and he didn't just go for the night. He just go there and stay one night and come back. He stayed there. He went to Badarik Ashram and he stayed up there in Badarik Ashram. He made his residence up there. There are saintly people who reside up there in Badarik Ashram. Huh? Thank you. So he, he came at Dhruva Maharaj, went up to Badarik Ashram, and he was up there in Badarik Ashram, and preparing for leaving the body. And in course of time, it happened that at one point, an airplane came from Vaikuntha with two people in the airplane. And he told Dhruva Maharaj, get, get in. You should come with us. It's time for you to leave now. Just like Tukaram, right? Tukaram was, there's that place in Maharashtra where Tukaram went back to Godhead. So, uh, Drupa Maharaj, the, the Vaikuntha, the servants of, from Vaikuntha came to bring Drupa Maharaj to go back to Godhead. But Dhruva Maharaj said, well, just a minute, before I go, my mother also has to go. What about my mother? What, was it, he, he was just attached to his mother? No, he thought, my mother, she was the one who brought me to God. She was the one who told me that I should go to forest and find God there. So Dhruva Maharaj said that, my mother also, she has to go back to God. I cannot go back without her. But the two men from Vaikuntha, they said, no, it's okay, look, there's another airplane there, and your mother's coming also. She's also getting in the airplane, and she's also going to Vaikuntha. So in this way, Dhruva Maharaj then offered his obeisances to all the other people there in Badarik Ashram, he offered them all respects, he took their blessings, and he got in the airplane and went off to Vaikuntha. Actually, Dhruva Maharaj went to the place called po the Pole Star, which is Dhruva Loka. There's a planet there. Now, this planet is special. It's a Vaikuntha planet, but it's within this universe. But it's a Vaikuntha planet. It's never destroyed. When, there's a, the, when there is the annihilation of the universe, at that time, Dhruva Loka just simply becomes unmanifest, but it's never destroyed. And so in this way, Dhruva Maharaj, he resides here in the pole star. And the pole star, of course, the, the whole, all the planets are rotating around the pole star. So Dhruva Maharaj resides here. And we're hearing from this verse today, that if we become absorbed in remembering the glories of Dhruva Maharaj and his wonderful characteristics and qualities and pastimes, then we can also go there. Yam yam vapismaram vavam chajiti anti kalevaram. Whatever we remember at the end of life, we'll attain that destiny. And if we can remember, the glories of great devotees like Dhruva Maharaj, then we can also go there 
And we can be there with Dhruva Maharaj. Just like in the third canto, it's described about Lord Kapila and Devahuti and how Devahuti was so absorbed in thinking of her son, Lord Kapila. And Devahuti, she, she went to that planet in the spiritual world where Lord Kapila resides. So there are many planets in the spiritual world in the spiritual sky by the planets and according to the particular mood of the devotee that as Prabhupada said that the person you're worshipping you can go there and be with that person so remembering the Lord or remembering his devotees are not different Prabhupada makes this point it's Dhruva Maharaj is the devotee and if you simply remember him, that can also take you back to Godhead. Just like sometimes people say that, well, I, I, I have attachment for my guru, but I don't have much attachment for, for Krishna. But if you're attached to your guru because your guru is a representative of Krishna, you get the same result. You can also go back to Godhead. And that is the goal of life. Okay? Any questions? Yes, Prabhu? Thank you, Maharaj, for the music class. Actually, you were stating this one point like uh, when Dhruva Maharaj's younger brother got killed by the Yakshas, Dhruva Maharaj got angry and he started killing all the Yakshas. So he got the darshan of Lord at the age of five years. So why is still that angry? I mean, why he got bewildered? Well, he had to go through further purification. He got, he got a lot of purification during his austerities in six months, but there were still some things there. He wasn't ready to go back to Godhead. And that's why the Lord made him the ruler. He made him the king. Go back home, take the throne, become the king, rule your kingdom. Have a night. You wanted the kingdom? Go back and take the kingdom and enjoy the kingdom. And so he went back and he did that and everything. But you know, sometimes it happens, you know, people become devotees, they come to Krishna consciousness. We have seen sometimes some people, they, they are very devoted and they do a lot of service, but somehow or other, sometimes they fall back into Maya. The, the material energy is so powerful. As Srila Prabhupada used to say to us, he said, don't be surprised to go from Krishna consciousness. Just be surprised that people stay. Because Maya is so powerful, so strong, that it can be built to the minds even of great souls. So Dhruva Maharaj got into difficulty, but he was able to rectify it. He was able to overcome it with the help of good instruction. And so we have to understand that even you may do great austerities and you may even see the Lord, but it doesn't make you a pure devotee. It doesn't take away everything. It doesn't take away all the material desires. There's still that these traces are there in the heart. Any time these kind of qualities like anger and uh, resentment can come up in the minds even of devotees. So therefore we have to always be very careful, very conscious that any time the material energy is so powerful, anybody can become bewildered. And see, we saw Lord Brahma had done great austerities to do the creation, but at one point he became lusty for his own daughter. So that's one example is there. And there are many other great yogis who also got Vishwamitra, for example. Of course, he was not in devotion, but he got bewildered by Menaka. Though the point is, we have to be very, very careful. The material energy is so strong. It's like Devotional service is like going on the edge of the razor. You have to go very carefully. One slip and you can cut, you get cut. And then when you get cut, then it's difficult to stop that bleeding. 
Yes, Prabhu. So, Ahinyas <coughs> and that and the proper in the some of the places say, go. We cannot completely <coughs> remove desire of anger. We can channel it into Krishna consciousness, right? And he, being a big brother, uh, Dhruva, so he wants to uh, he wants to do the brotherly duty, let us say. Well, can we take it that way or just something material? Well, certainly, yeah, he, he, he was angry because he had so much affection for his own brother. Yes, he wants to get revenge for that. They killed my brother, I'm going to get them for that. I'm not going to let them away with killing my brother. He felt certainly some duty there, that as his brother, that I should take, I, I shouldn't tolerate this. I, I can't let people just kill my brother and I won't take any action. And so the Kshatriya mood is like that, that definitely they will want to uh, take some action against culprits who have caused harm, have done inju some injustice to your own family members, to your own people, who want to get revenge. And so yes, we can say it like that. Yes, the Dhruva Maharaj feels it's his duty to do that. It's his duty to take action against these people. And when you go against some people, you go against the Yakshas, then all the Yakshas all come and they all fight, you know. So it was difficult just to go and just, who was the one who killed my brother, you know. <laughs> you couldn't just go and say, who was the one who killed my brother, you know. So he went started fighting with the Yakshas and then fight a, a group of them and then more Yakshas come and then you got the whole Yaksha race on you. It was a great battle. So th this is the problem with anger. That it becomes like that. It's such a dangerous thing. You say, use it in the service of the Lord, but it's a very dangerous thing to try to do. To try to use anger in the service of Krishna is not really recommended because it quickly degrades us. We have a saying, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. So you could think like that, my brother, one yaksha for my brother, you know. <laughs> but he, didn't, he couldn't get just one yaksha, he had to fight all the yakshas. So uh, if if, if we try to follow this principle of an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, the result will be, what will be the result? We'll have no eyes and no teeth. Everybody will have all their eyes knocked out and all their teeth removed. That's what will happen. You try to follow that kind of principle. And so we do have to develop tolerance. And we do have to understand that certain factors are beyond our control and we have to see the, the plan of the Lord and we have to surrender to that. And it's not that we can always be thinking, I have to get revenge. It's not about revenge, but it's taking care of duty, right? Uh, in Prabhupada, with one of the Buddhist monks uh, discussion, uh, he says, like a uh, Buddhist monk says, you have called, right? And Prabhupada asks his disciples, who are uh, ladies, uh, uh, that if they are in trouble, will you uh, help or tolerate? Then that monk says that he tolerate, and they, their uh, disciples were not happy. I don't know, I thought so much. Oh, I don't know, I've never heard anything. Okay. Buddhism. <laughs> but certainly, tolerance is a devotional quality. We should tolerate happiness and distress. Yes, we have to learn tolerance. Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Shri Prabhupada. Jai.